Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. I hope you had a lovely holiday and uh, enjoyed yourselves and didn't eat anything that I wouldn't eat and all that good stuff. Um, I have some great stuff to share with you today, some really kind of groundbreaking research that I found. Uh, but first, I'll remind everybody, um, I'm offering two more of these free healthcare workshops where um, I'm talking about how to convert to independent practice uh, why a PMA may not be a very good idea. These private membership uh, associations are overhyped and not quite what you think they are. And what I think the public is looking for, how to look at this from a consumer perspective. Those are December 28th, this uh, tomorrow, actually, I think, and um, January 5th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern through Zoom. So you can be any place and participate. It's free. And if you want to do that, just send me an email. Also send me an email if you're thinking of doing something healthcare-wise, making a change, changing career, whatever it is, and um, you want to take a look at our programs and or have a personal conversation with me. I set aside time every week for this because I think it's really important that we get good people into positions to help people. It's one of my missions in life these days. Don't forget about my long COVID workshop on January 9th or 11th, rather. Don't forget about our fabulous food products, which have long shelf life and may come in handy as the world becomes a crazier place. And we have an AFib workshop coming up in January as well. So with that, let's get to a topic I think you're going to find really interesting. It's about the gut microbiome, which is made of a rich carpet of bacteria, most of it beneficial in a healthy gut. And these bacteria are involved in a wide range of human functions, including digestion of food, absorption of nutrients, regulation of metabolism, and directing the immune system. Most research on the microbiome is relatively recent. New discoveries are being made all the time. For example, it was just recently discovered that the microbiome could influence mood states, suspected for a long time, but pretty much now confirmed. In fact, almost all physical or mental processes are influenced by the gut. In fact, the bugs in your gut, it seems, can even impact exercise in some very interesting ways. Now, previous studies have shown that the gut microbiome can enhance the benefits of exercise. For example, skeletal muscle adaptation and response to exercise and cardiorespiratory fitness. A new study looked at the influence of the gut microbiome on motivation to exercise. Very interesting. It involved mice, but it was really well-designed and the results I think are worth discussing. Researchers used 199 mice from eight different genetic backgrounds to make sure that the results were not limited to a particular strain of mice. The microbiomes of the mice were altered using multiple antibiotics. Some had fully functional microbiomes, some were compromised, some partially or even completely removed. Then endurance was tested while running on a treadmill for an extended period of time or running on a wheel. Mice were allowed to run as often as they wanted and for as long as they wanted to on the wheel. Mice with compromised gut microbiomes became tired more quickly when they were running on the treadmill. They also spent less time on the wheel, which researchers reported was due to reduced motivation to exercise. To identify a mechanism of action, researchers analyzed neurons involved in producing dopamine and found that genes that normally expressed during exercise were lower when microbiomes were compromised or missing. A follow-up experiment that involved limiting dopamine production during exercise resulted in exactly the same effect. The researchers reported that it's likely that dopamine production was a significant factor in a mouse's motivation to exercise and that the gut microbiome likely plays a role in the production and regulation of dopamine in the brain. In other words, mice with compromised microbiomes didn't experience the dopamine rush resulting from running, which some people refer to as a runner's high. Further experimentation allowed researchers to determine how gut microbes influence dopamine in the brain. Metabolites called fatty acid amides, or FAAs, are produced by the microbes in a healthy gut. FAAs are most active during exercise, and they generate neurotransmitters called endocannabinoids, which in turn trigger neurons that stimulate dopamine production in the brain. More research, of course, is needed to determine if these exact pathways and mechanisms are alive in humans and active in humans, and if so, the extent of the influence since social environments and family and friends and so many other factors influence human behavior, including motivation to exercise. Having said this, there is ample evidence now to suggest that most people living in westernized society have compromised microbiomes that this has a negative effect on human health and all aspects of human health, and that better diets and probiotics can improve microbiomes and enhance and improve human health. 
really interesting new research. Um, not surprising, actually, uh, but um, very interesting. Wanted to share that with you. So do I think that taking probiotics will make you want to jump on the treadmill and spend more time or get to the gym? Probably not by themselves, but every little bit helps, particularly since exercise seems to be the most difficult thing that we have to get people to do. And uh, Mr. Winston is squiggling here and wants to say hello to everybody. And um, he had a lovely holiday, just so you know, got everything on his uh, holiday shopping list. All right, down you go. He's up and he's down. All right, well, that's it for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and learn from it. And I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.